So hi guys, welcome back. So we are in CA final revision session. Uh, before the break, we have seen seven questions. We have discussed some of the principles as well. Now we are starting with question number eight. Question number eight is based on joint products. This problem you can see if you remember, uh, you have in CA intermediate accounts as well. And also in CA intermediate costing, joint products, byproducts accounting, the same copy paste problem is there with same principles, same numbers, same logic, nothing special, but important model. Look here. In a manufacturing process of Mars Limited, previously in uh, older textbook, if you see, there will be Vijay. The company name is Vijay. Mars Limited, one byproduct BP emerges besides two main products, MP1, MP2, apart from scrap. So to total, there are four things. One byproduct, two main products, and one scrap. Details of cost of production process are here as under. Raw material, 14,500 units, 150,000. Wages, 90,000. Fixed overhead, 65,000. Variable overhead, 50,000. Main product one, 5,000 units. Main product two, 4,000 units. By product, 2,000 units. Closing stock of first product is 250. Closing stock of second main product is 100. Okay. Average market price of MP1 and MP2 is 60 and 50 per unit respectively. By product is sold at 20 per unit. Why they have given selling price of MP1, MP2 and BP? Simple. Because common costs, joint costs are to be apportioned between these three products. What is the joint cost that raw material 1,50,000, wages 90, fixed overhead 65, variable overheads 50. Add all the four and tell me how much it is. 150 plus 90, 240. 240 plus 65, 240 plus 65, 305 plus 50. Is it 355? 355 is the gross cost. Okay. That should be a portion. Okay. Now. There is a profit of 5,000 on sale of byproduct. Very good. After incurring separate processing charge of 8,000 and packing of 2,000. Okay. 5,000 was realized for, from sale of scrap. Scrap is sold at 5,000. Okay. Calculate the value of closing stock of MP1 and MP2 as on 313-2001. Okay. First, what we do is we have to calculate net realizable value of the byproduct. Okay, so open your notes, put the heading working note one. What is working note one? Calculation of. What is working note one? Calculation of net realizable value of byproduct. Okay, net realizable value of byproduct. Okay, under that estimated selling price. Estimated selling price. I think they have given. Estimated selling price, isn't it? Estimated selling price. So, byproduct can be sold at a 20 per unit and there are 2000 units. So, calculate 2000 units into 20. That comes to 40,000. But you have to incur two types of costs. What are the two types of costs you have to incur? Look here. 8,000 some processing charge, packing charge 2,000. Further processing charge 8,000 less further processing charge 8,000. Packing 2,000. So technically net realizable value is 40,000 minus 10,000. So can I say that is 30,000? So net realizable value, you can write net realizable value of the byproduct is 30,000. So, so far clear? Net realizable value of byproduct is 30,000. You understand? Now, joint cost. This is note one, note two, joint cost. joint cost. Already we have calculated some 3,55,000. There are four items. Item 1, 2, 3, 4. So I don't need to write raw material. I don't need to write 1, 2, 3, 4. So total put together is we have already calculated. It comes to 3,55,000. Correct? Minus net realizable value of byproduct. Just now we calculated 30,000. Minus scrap value. He said scrap is sold at 5,000. So 
net joint cost to be apportioned net joint cost to be apportioned between main product 1 and main product 2 is 3 lakhs 20000 now now you can understand going backwards what is the accounting principle in this simple if there are some main products and some byproducts while calculating what is the cost of inventory while calculating what is the cost of inventory the net realizable value of the byproduct shall be subtracted from the joint cost from the joint cost from the joint cost net realizable value of the byproduct should be subtracted then any scrap value if it is there that is to be subtracted that is called net joint cost to be apportioned between main products now what is the basis on which this 320000 can be apportioned between can be distributed between mp1 and mp2 in costing you might have seen physical quantity method sale revenue method you might have seen different methods in joint costing and uh, joint uh, and by products but as per india s2 there is only one method that is net realizable value method you need to calculate what is the net realizable value of mp1 and mp2 okay right now calculation of calculation of calculation of cost of inventory calculation of cost of inventory under that particulars main product one main product two main product one main product okay we'll write output what is the output can someone tell me what is the output of main product one and main product two please can someone without wasting time please tell me fast what is output of mp1 and output of mp2 5000 4000 right 5000 4000 can you tell me what is the selling price Selling price, please. I want your participation. I can check it myself. I remember the numbers also, but I am asking you because I want you to tell me. Not that I cannot see, not that I do not remember the numbers. I want you to tell me. Someone told 250 and 100 ED yet, that is clothing stock. Who said 250, 100? I'll kill you. 60, 50 it is. Selling price. So can you calculate and tell me sales, output and selling price? Can you calculate and tell me net realizable value? 60, 50. Okay. Now calculate. This is A, this is B. C, net realizable value is equal to A into B. Okay. 5,000 into 60. 3 lakhs. Huh? Here, 2 lakhs. So, can I say the ratio is 3 to 2? Can I say ratio is 3 to 2? So, this is D. E. Share of joint cost. Share of joint cost. So, 3 lakh 20,000 divided by total 5 portions into 3 goes to MP1. Into 2 goes to MP2. Correct? Can you calculate tell me 3 lakh 20,000 divided by 5 into 3? How much more? I want you to calculate and tell me 3 lakh 20,000 divided by 5 into 3. How much? Is it 1 lakh 92,000? Rajasri is saying 1 lakh 92,000. Okay. Also, I want you to tell me for the second uh, product. One lakh twenty eight thousand. One lakh twenty eight thousand. Correct. Okay. Now, can you calculate cost per unit? Cost per unit. 
Okay. Is it 192,000 divided by how many units? 5,000 units. 192,000 divided by 5,000 units. I'll also take calculator in my mobile. So 192,000 divided by 5,000. Is it 58.4? The other one, is it 32? G, number of units in closing stock. Number of units in closing stock. Closing stock units they have given. Closing stock units they have given in the question. Can you tell me what is the closing stock units? Is it 250-100? Is it 250-100? Now tell me inventory value value of inventory you know number of units you know per unit cost multiply the two value of inventory as per in days two so 38.4 into 250 9600 32 into 100 3200 This is the answer. 9,600 MP1, 3,200 MP2. This is the answer. So everybody understood the answer? Is this clear for everyone? So, can we go to next question? Okay. So, look here. This too. So, I want someone to read this. Rahul Rajeshri, someone who has the mic. Can you please read this? Standard cost method and retail method. I want you to read this too. Yes, sir. Hmm. Read more. Uh, standard cost method. Cost is uh, based on normal levels of materials and supplies, labor efficiency, and capacity utilization. They are regularly reviewed and revised where necessary. Retail Which method. Cost is determined by reducing the sales value of the inventory by the appropriate percentage gross margin. The percentage use, used takes into consideration inventory that has marked down to below its original selling price. This method is often used in the industrial in the retail industry for measuring inventories of rapidly changing items that have similar margins. No. One of the most important things you should remember is everybody remembers the cost formula, FIFO and weighted average. Everybody says cost or NRV, whichever is lower, cost is calculated using either this uh, FIFO method or weighted average method. The answer is no. Indias 2 says, first try to understand the nature of inventory. Are they interchangeable or they are separately traceable? For example, if you go to a pharmacy or if you go to any medical shop, imagine there are, say, 1 lakh protein tablets, 1 lakh dollar tablets or 1 lakh tablets. Every tablet looks same. The look and feel, if you look at it, every strip is same. But don't you think on every tablet, on every sheet, there is a separate barcode and they are easily, you know, traceable. So looking at one particular sheet, he can easily tell you which batch it is, who is the supplier, when that is purchased, what is the manufacture date, what is the expiry date, what is the rate, everything. 
Since that is the reason when you are buying, say, 20 tablets, when you go to any uh, medical shop, you ask him 20 tablets. Same tablet, when he is giving you the bill, na, when he is giving you the bill, Dolo, 16 tablets, one line item will be there. Dolo, four tablets, one line item will be there. Sometimes you'll be surprised, what the hell, this idiot, 20 tablets I purchased, he is giving bill, 16 tablets, one line item. Huh? Four tablets, another line item. He's an idiot. No, they are from different batches. Maybe the rate is different. Maybe the batch number is different. Maybe the expiry date is different. Something is different. So even though you have one lakh medicines, please try to understand every medicine is traceable. They are not interchangeable. This is one example. Another example is, say, you know, for example, you are a wholesaler selling uh, some mangoes or oranges. You have 1 lakh mangoes or you have 1 lakh oranges. What happens? It is not necessary that all the 1 lakh oranges you bought from same supplier. There are 100 farmers. You are one agent or you are one wholesaler. 100 farmers, daily they will come and say, Anna, this is my produce. So you will take, you will weigh and say, okay, you have given 60 kgs. This is the rate. Go. From another supplier again you buy. From another supplier again you buy. So when you have uh, 1 lakh oranges, taking one orange, you cannot trace from which farmer you bought it, on what date you bought it, on what you know time you bought it, or at what cost you bought it. You cannot. These are what we call interchangeable. You understand? So the standard uses one beautiful chart, this one. Very, very, very important. Inventory items that are interchangeable. Inventory items that are not interchangeable. If, if they are inventory items which are not interchangeable, there is a technique called SIM. SIM specific identification method. There is something called specific identification method. So you need to identify the inventory. Don't use FIFO. Don't use weighted average method. So look at that and try to identify this. The best example I'll give you. I have done audit of Bata. Bata company, internal audits we have done. So there can be 20,000 shoes. But when you take one shoe, looking at the tag they have, barcode they have, don't you think it is very easy for you to take the barcode reader, read it, and in your screen, clearly it will come. This is Hush Puppies brand. This is 42 European. This is so-and-so. Black color. This is the rate. This is the cost. Everything comes on the screen. You might say, Pavan sir, I have 20,000 pairs of shoe, Pavan sir. That means 40,000 shoes I have. But, my dear friend, even if all the 20,000 are same model, they are identifiable. Then you cannot follow FIFO or weighted average method. No, you cannot. They use something called specific identification method. That means this 20,000 pairs of shoe, each and every shoe, you will calculate cost, NRV, whichever is lower. So the cost is identified item by item. Normally for jewelry, tailor made uh, uh, products or this kind of shoes, nowadays pharmacy, all these people use specific identification method. If you say, Pavan sir, like that we cannot do Pavan sir. But specific identification is not possible. Then you have two options. One is historical cost method. One is non-historical cost method. Historical cost method again has FIFO and weighted average. This is where people are stuck. But in non-historical cost methods, there are two methods. Retail inventory method. Standard cost method. Very important. Now, look here. Pavan, sir, I am selling oranges. I have one lakh oranges with me. I purchased these oranges from 150 different farmers. There are different, different, different suppliers, different supplies, different batches. 
continuously i buy continuously i sell continuously i buy continuously i sell and once i buy certain cages from one farmer i pay amount to him i dump it in the godown i cannot trace it so there can be you know per kg 40 rupees item is there 41 rupee item is there 42 rupee item is there 35 rupee item is there you know but when they are selling what they do you know they will identify the size of the orange this size they will put in one lump another size they will put in one lump another size they will put in one lump and when it comes to sales they will say that is 50 rupees this is 40 rupees this is 30 rupees isn't it but they will not buy it like that they buy you know in bulk and after them this one now you go and ask this businessman hey hey here one lakh oranges are there do you know what is the cost he will say no i do not know the cost surprising but do you know the selling price guys tell me he doesn't know the cost because that came from different sources but do you know the selling price yes do you know the gross profit margin yes because it is bloody your industry you are operating you are you have been selling oranges for 40 years of your life for these kind of people indias 2 says okay cost of inventory is take selling price minus gross profit because logically sales minus gross profit is your cost only no cost of goods sold or cost of production if there is no opening stock closing stock simple correct so a reverse working this is called retail method this is called retail method another method is standard cost method so look here retail method is used look here it is used when large numbers of rapidly changing items with the similar margins are involved it means margin you know 40% margin you have in your industry rapidly changing items then you use retail inventory this is selling price minus cost selling selling price minus gross profit is cost then when standard cost method is used it takes into account normal levels of and are reviewed regularly normal levels of uh, inventory and reviewed regularly materials supplies labor efficiency capacity utilization these are the four parameters they have given but doesn't matter when you understand when you read this chart then when you go to this previous question you understand this what it is question number nine so note it as important in question number nine there will be two parts a and b in one part we'll use retail method in one part you'll do we'll use standard cost method you understand I want someone to read this question, please. Who's there? Can someone read this question, please? Okay, yeah, read more. Last question. Can you actually be made from egg or anything vegetable nugget? Can you advise the economy of the company on the necessary economy treatment for the following items? Uh, one of the com one of companies prioritizes beauty products, particularly cosmetics, such as lipsticks, moisturizers, and compact makeup kit. Mm -hmm. The company sells hundreds of different brands of these products. Each product is quite similar, is purchased at similar prices, and has a short life cycle before a new similar product is released. The point of sale the system is not yet fully functioning in this department. Mm. The sales manager's cosmetic department is unsure of the cost of each product, but is confident of the selling price and has reliably informed you that the company on average may gross margin of 65% on each price. So when you read when you read this particular part of the question, they have clearly mentioned that cost is not identifiable. Each and every product, cost is not identifiable, but I know the selling price. I know what is the gross profit margin I will have. Then I'll do reverse working. Sales minus gross profit margin is my cost. You understand? Normally, I have to calculate cost. But I'm doing it reverse. Now, you know, you might feel, Pavan sir, is there any businessman or industry who uses this? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Uh, not my friend. One of my known contacts, a person who I know from Bangalore, what they do, you know, every three months, four months, he'll go to Dubai, he'll go to Thailand, 
he'll go to street shops in thailand and all it is you know street shops are very famous do you know finest quality of leather belts there, there are no brands okay there is no brand on it some xyz print will be there but you don't know you know who's the manufacturer what is the brand but the belt is good the purse is good the wallet is good lipsticks you know hair bands and uh, this uh, mobile covers screen guards they buy in clothes apparel they buy in bulk in that in that street uh, shops itself in that street itself there will be dhl or some uh, you know um, what is that called logistics partner like you know some courier agency will be there like your blue dot courier professional courier some courier guy will sit so you buy things from 100 different shops you do not even know from where you bought what they will not give you bills also you will pay in cash so you know that you bought say for example 10000 items you know that you have spent 6 lakhs all these things you will give it in that uh, courier counter they will pack it they will send it to your india address when you received it you opened 10000 items are there but you do not know what is the cost of each item but you know the selling price you know your average gross profit then while calculating inventory at the end of the year you take the selling price minus the gross profit margin whatever the cost is that is your value of inventory that is what question number a is very interesting question number b read question number b ma um, mass fashions also sells handbags the company manufactures their own handbags as they wish to be assured of the quality and craftsmanship which goes into each handbag the handbags are manufactured in india in the head office factory which has made handbags for the last 50 years normally ma mass manufacturers one lakh handbags a year in their handbag division which uses 15% of the space and overheads of the head office factory the division employs 10 people and is seen as being an efficient division within the overall company in accordance in days to explain how the items referred to in, to in a and b should be measured in the second case you can use standard costing why well, you know you are experienced you have been doing this for long your capacity utilization your resource utilization how many people are there how many bags are manufactured how much you will pay how much of cost you incur everything you know in these situations you can use standard cost method but this retail method and standard cost method are to be used when you do not have management information system and data nowadays you know when you have erp when you have sap when you have computers everything can be traced when you cannot trace then you use these kind of things so read the facts of the case a you will use retail method b you will use standard cost method because in b your capacity utilization your resource utilization your production level uh, everything is clearly known then you use standard cost method of course standard cost method you will review also you will not use same standard cost every year maybe monthly or annually or quarterly you will review your standard cost this is b look at the answers the retail method can be used for measuring inventories of beauty products first one the cost of inventory is determined by taking the selling price of cosmetics reduce it with gross profit margin which is 65% given in the question then you will get the value of inventory b the handbags can be measured using standard cost especially if the results approximate cost given that the company has the information reliably on hand in relation to direct materials direct labor direct expenses overheads it would be best method to use to arrive at the cost of inventory that's all you understand this question again i'm telling you this chart in 19th page is very important please make a note you have to read this okay and after that inventory which is ordinarily not interchangeable inventory which is interchangeable if it is interchangeable you can use fifo you can use weighted average okay all fifo lifo one question is given but this is lkg question okay you might have seen this in your uh, you know 11th class 12th class also simple question whether an entity can use different cost formula for inventories held at different geographical locations having similar nature and use to it question number 10 simple one single line question tell me the answer yes or no i want you to tell read the question use your common sense use your accounting knowledge tell me the answer 
yes or no? I want your answer in the chat box. Hello, I am asking your answer. Alina said no, Rajeshwari said no. What about others? Rahul is saying no. Rajiv is saying no. Harini is saying no. Correct, the answer is no. Simple. Same inventory, if you have in two different locations, say for example, this is HP Stylus. Say HP Stylus, the model 3150. Just random example. I don't know what the model number is, but if it is HP Stylus 3150, you have 50 pieces in Chennai, 40 pieces in Bangalore. If it is same item, the cost formula should be same. So one entity, same entity, having 50 items of inventory in one geographical location and 40 in another geographical location cannot use two different cost formulae. I cannot say, Pavan sir, in Chennai, I use FIFO. In Bangalore, I use weighted average. No, not allowed. If you are one entity, if the inventory item is same, though although they are located in two different geographical locations, use the same cost formula. That is what we call consistency. Isn't it? So this is the question. Harini, can you read question number 11, please? Yes, sir. Hmm. Mercury Limited uses a periodic inventory system. The following information relates to 20x1, 20x2. For the month of April, 200 units of inventory purchased, cost per unit 10, having total cost of 2000. For the month of May, purchases of 50 units, cost per unit 11, totaling to rupees 550. For the month of September, purchased 400 units, having cost per unit of 12, totaling to 4,800. For the month of February, purchased 350 units, having cost per unit of 14, totaling to rupees 4,900. Total units purchased 1,000, total cost 12,250. Physical inventory as on 313200X2, 400 units. Calculate ending inventory value and cost of sale using FIFO and weighted average method. Simple ma'am. So if there are 400 units, imagine I am following FIFO. I am following FIFO. Okay. I am following FIFO. So total number of units, total number of units in inventory, units in closing stock is equal to 400. So in this 400, if you look at it, 350 might be there because I'm following FIFO. So first one, already I might have used this 200. I might have used this 50. I might have used many items in this 400, but this 350 is still in my hand and 50 of this in my hand. So 350 into 14, 350 into 14. 50 into 12. This is my inventory value. Do you agree with me? 350 into 14, how much? Tell me. 350 into 14. Is it 4,900? 50 into 12, how much? Is it 600? Add both. 5,500. This is inventory. Okay, inventory is 5,500. What is the total cost? 12,250. 12,250. So, cost of sales is equal to 12,250 minus 5,500. Can you tell me how much this is? Is it 6,750? This is if you are using FIFO method. Okay. If you are using weighted average method, if you are using weighted average method, 
cost per unit is equal to what is the total cost you bought it with 12,250 and total thousand units. 12,250 by thousand units. How much it is? Is it 12.25? 12,250 divided by 1000. Logically, it should be 12.25. Okay. So, inventory 400 units into 12.25. 4,900. Cost of sales. Six hundred into twelve point two five. Seven thousand three fifty. That's all. They asked you to calculate inventory value and cost of sales if you use before, if you use weighted average. Simple question. We don't need to spend more time also on this. Can we go to next question? Hello. Can we go to next question? Wasting time on this kind of things is a sin. Okay. So check if our answers are correct. Okay. So question number 12, cost of completion of work in progress. This we know. Trade discounts. I told you what is the treatment of trade discount. I told you what is the treatment of cash discount. So can we say question number 12 is over in principle? Work in progress, when you are calculating net realizable value of work in progress, what do you do? Tell me. Estimated selling price. From that, you subtract further processing cost. Then you will get NRV of work in progress. Common sense, basic question. So this cash discount, trade discounts also I told you. Look here. Guidance note on terms used in financial statements. I told you what is trade discount, what is cash discount, what is the, you know, mm, counting treatment as per index to everything we have discussed already. Okay. So, can someone read question number 13, please? ABC Limited, Manufacturers and Sell Trade. Louder, please. Your voice is very low. ABC Limited manufactures and sells paper envelopes. The smoke of envelopes was included in the closing inventory as of 31st March 2011. Mm. A technical of rupees 50 per pack. Mm. During the final audit, the auditors noted that the subsequent sale price for the inventory at 15th April 2011 was rupees 40 per pack. Mm. Further, inquiry reveals that during the physical stock take, a water leakage has created damages to the paper and the glue. Accordingly, in the following week, ABC Limited has spent a total of rupees 15 per pack for repairing and reapplying glue to the envelopes. Calculate the net realizable value and inventory write down loss M. Very good. Simple question. So, all of you read the question once again. All of you read the question once again. So we have to say cost or NRV, whichever is lower, correct? Cost we know, 50 per pack they have given. Question number 13. Cost given 50 per pack. Net realizable value. What is net realizable value? A, estimated selling price. B, minus cost to sell. Estimated selling price minus cost to sell. They are giving you a story, screenplay, drama, direction, dialogues. So much of drama is there. But basically, subsequent to the balance sheet date, you are able to sell it at 40 rupees. So that 40 rupees should be taken as the basis. 40 rupees. So you sold it on 15th April. That means our balance sheet date is 31st March. Subsequently, you'll be able to, you are able to sell it at 40 rupees. That is the basis. 
but to sell it at 40 you had to spend 15 rupees again why again there is a story because of some water the envelopes have become defective the glue has you know something spoiled and then you reworked but finally you had to spend 15 rupees to sell it if you do not spend this 15 rupees you cannot sell the product so net realizable value is 25 now you tell me cost or net realizable value which whichever is lower how much 25 so inventory value inventory value is equal to 25 rupees per pack but pavan sir in our books already 50 is there cost is 50 what to do write it off write it off because inventory value is only 25 inventory to be written down write off inventory at 25 to be handled as loss this is loss. Right down of inventory, we call it. That's all. So you understand answer to question number 13? All of you, please let me know in the chat box. Can we go to the next question? Hello, 13 is over. 14. Can someone read question number 14, please? Alina, can you read question number 14? Yes, um, at the end of this financial year, company P has 100 units of inventory on hand. Recorded at a carrying amount of rupees 10 per unit. Can I say that this? Can I say this 10 rupees is cost? Yes. Yes, yes this 10 rupees is cost. Yeah. Okay, very good. Next. The current market price is rupees 8 per unit at which these units can be sold. So, can I Something say this 8 rupees? One second, ma. One second. Can I say this 8 rupees is net realizable value? Yes. No. No, there is any cost to sell. That is market price. That means it is fair value. But for this particular entity, what will be the estimated selling price? It may or may not be 8 rupees. I told you at the beginning of the class itself, fair value and net realizable value are different. Fair value is market driven. Net realizable value is entity driven. You understand? Next, continue. Yes, yes. Company P has firm sales contract with company Q to sell 50 units at rupees 11 per unit, which cannot be set till next. Estimated incremental selling cost is rupees 1 per unit. So, this particular company, uh, 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 excuse uh, me, can, can all the remaining people put call in mute? Okay. So, out of 100 units, this particular company, company P, has a contract to sell 60 units to another company, company Q, 11 rupees per unit, which cannot be settled net. That means you have to purchase this, that's all. So this 11 rupees is the estimated sale value. From that, if you subtract this 1 rupee selling cost, that gives you net realizable value. But Pavan sir, I have 100 units, but this contract is only for 60 units. What about remaining 40 units? For remaining 40 units, you will use that 8 rupees. Okay, now look here. All of you look here carefully. With the question number, what is the question number 14? Question number 14. Cost is equal to 100 units into 10 is equal to 1000. Okay. In this 100 units, NRV of 
60 units nrv of 40 units this 60 units has firm commitment from company q at 11 rupees selling price minus 1 rupee this cost to sell 10 rupees this is nrv here no commitment from any company no commitment here we'll take market price what is market price at a rate of 8 rupees minus 1 rupee cost to sell 7 rupees so here 60 units into 10 rupees is 600 Here, forty units into seven rupees is two eighty. So your total value of inventory is six hundred plus two eighty, eight eighty. Net realizable value of inventory. Net realizable value is eight eighty. So now cost is thousand. Net realizable value eight eighty. Whichever is lower, eight eighty is the inventory value. So one twenty rupees should be written off to P and L. One twenty is inventory written off to P and L. Last to be recognized in S O P L. That is what we do. What is this one twenty? You know, if you know how to reconcile things on this forty units, you lost three rupees. This is seven rupees, no? So forty into three fall is one twenty. To one twenty, you are writing off to P and L. Interesting problem. Simple problem. You understand, guys? So inventory value is eight eighty. Inventory to be written down to P and L is one twenty. That's all. Any doubts in this, guys? Any doubts in this question? If you have doubts, please ask me.